Hi everybody, today we are checking out the Asus GL771JM-DH71. This is a 17.3 inch computer and it's a 1920 by 1080 resolution with a matte type screen. For the CPU we have Intel's i7-4710HQ. That's a 2.5 to 3.5 gigahertz processor that is not upgradable, it's integrated onto the motherboard. For the video card, it's a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 860M with two gigs of VRAM, which is GDDR5. For system RAM, there's 12 gigs, and that is upgradable to 16 gigs, and that's 1600 megahertz. For the hard drive, there comes a one terabyte 7200 RPM pre-installed. There is a open two and a half inch hard drive bay, as well as one open M.2 drive. So you can add an SSD pretty easily to it if you want faster speeds. There's a DVD CD drive in there. That's also upgradable, so if you want Blu-ray capabilities, you can add that to it. For the wireless card, we're looking at Intel's AC3160. Windows 8.1 is pre-installed. Comes with a one-year North American warranty. That also includes a one-year of accidental damage protection. That does require registration within the first 30 days of it being shipped out, so make sure you do that. For the dimensions, we're at 16.3 inches across. 11 inches deep and a depth from 1.2 to 1.4 inches. For the weight, we're at 7.5 pounds and that is including the six cell battery. We'll have a quick look at the back, the back panel here. As you can see, it does have a brushed metal look to it. And the Republic of Gamers logo is backlit. So it's a red light there. I'll turn the room light off and you can see how that glows. Let's take a look at the viewing angles on the screen. Again, this is a matte type 1920 by 1080. I'll go ahead and spin it off to the left hand side and I'll keep an eye out to make sure the camera is picking up what I see with my eye. And right there, it's seen about the same thing, really no color washout and that's what we're looking for, for those colors to change as we change the angle on it. So we'll spin it off to the right. And really no washout left or right. So we'll go ahead and pull it down towards us and lean it back. You can see the red on this camera losing a little intensity there. And I'm kind of seeing that in person as well. It shut off thinking I was going to close it. I'll go ahead and lean it back. It's about as far back as it's going to go. And that gets us a good idea of the viewing angles there. Let's take a look at the keyboard. This is a full-size keyboard here with the numeric pad off to the side of it. As you can see, it has a red backlighting to it. Uh, there's three settings on it. It's on high right now, and function F3 will drop it down, medium, low, and then off. And I'll just turn that back on. That's going to be the highest setting right there. Uh, it's a chiclet type keyboard. And how it's designed, uh, the keys actually come through the, the chassis, if you will. So there's not a separate keyboard that lays into it, it just comes through. So that gives it a good solid build to it. Very little to no flexing on that. And then what you may notice as well is the WASD keys have additional lighting on them. Uh, just to draw a little bit more attention, those are gonna be your gaming keys. And then we have our touchpad here. It is recessed down from the rest of the chassis. So your palm rests and then you can feel it kind of go down a little bit. I don't even know it's down, but there's a separation there. Uh, for the left click and right click. There, you can see there's no separation there. There's just a, a little mark to indicate where it's at, but it's just painted on there. You can't feel it. So as you go across, very smooth, but it is a different texture there, so you can feel where that touchpad is. And it is going to be centered with the keyboard. So sometimes it looks off-centered to the rest of the computer because it's more on the left-hand side, but it is centered directly with the keyboard there. 
Let's take a look at the ports around the computer. Starting on the left-hand side, that is your power, so that's where the AC adapter goes in. Then we're going to have the left-hand exhaust vent right after that. Some ports coming up off to the side. First, we're going to have an Ethernet port, and that looks kind of small, but it's hinged, so when you put your Ethernet cable in there, it'll hinge down and hold it in place. We have a mini display port, HDMI, and then two USB ports there. And then let's spin it off to the right. It's going to be your status indicator lights. We'll come back to that in a minute to get a, a better view of those to show you what's all included in the lights. Go off to the right hand side. First port's going to be your headphone port, followed by two more USB ports. We have an optical drive and then your Kensington lock. On the rear, there's no ports on the rear there. So we'll just finish back off on the right hand side where we started off. Well, let's take a look at the boot time. Again, this is a 7200 RPM hard drive on there. So not SSD, not expecting the fastest boot times on there. And my phone's set up. I'm going to hit the start and the power button at the same time. So we'll go three, two, one, go. And this is from a dead cold boot, not a reboot or sleep or hibernate or anything like that. I'll do my best to stop this once we hit the desktop. So about 30 seconds till we get to the Windows desktop. It did start to the tiles or the Metro interface there. Um, you can get to the regular desktop by holding down the Windows key and pressing D. That will take you there. Uh, but a boot time of a little over 30 seconds. With SSDs, you know, a lot of times you can get 10 to 15 seconds. Also in, uh, cut down your program startup times, any type of read-write activity. So always a good option to add a M.2 or put a SSD in the second hard drive bay. We did run Crystal Dismark just to check the read write speeds of the hard drive. This is that one terabyte 7200 RPM. So you can see the sequential read times 137 megabytes per second and write at 129 or 128 megabytes per second. 4K speeds down here 0.395 and a 0.9 for the write speeds. We're going to go ahead and run 3D Mark Fire Strike to check out the performance of the computer. As you can see, we have the decimal meter set off to the left where the exhaust port is. That's so you can see how the fan noise kicks up as the computer goes under stress. I'll put the microphone down over there too so you can actually hear how much uh, the fans kick up. I have hardware monitor running in the background as well as uh, MSI afterburner. So we'll look at temperatures after we're done. And like usual, we will overlay our um, thermal pictures over so you can see where the heat is being generated. All right, we're finished up with 3D Mark Fire Strike. So here's the results. You can see the score 3,614 there, a graphic score 3,860, a physics score 8,289, and a combined score 1,156. Again, uh, it's the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 860M and the Intel i7-4710HQ. Take a look at hardware monitor to see where our CPU temps made it to. And you can see right here, mid-80s, so 82, 84, 86. And let's take a look at MSI Afterburner so we can see our GPU temps. Might be a little tough to see, but I can see it in person. It's showing 77. So good low temperatures for the GPU, especially for a benchmark like 3D Mark Firestrike. 
Okay, we have our second result done here. This is 3D Mark Fire Strike. We'll just go over this score, 10,986. A graphic score of 12,237. Physics score 7,022. And a combined score 11,944. Take a look at hardware monitor to see the CPU temps here. Uh, pretty much the same as they were as Fire Strike. So we're seeing 81, 85, 83, 86. And let's look at the GPU temps, exactly the same. So we're at 77 for the GPU right there. Uh, so that lets us know about Fire Strike. We'll take a look at 3D Mark 11. That'll be the last one. And we'll go over that result in a second. All right, the last benchmark we're taking a look at is 3D Mark 11. Got this pulled up right in front here. And as you can see, the score of P5004. We have a graphics score 4,766. Physics score 7,165 and a combined score of 4,647. Take a look at 3D, or excuse me, hardware monitor to look at CPU temps, just where they've always been on the last previous ones too 81, 82, 86, 85. And for MSI Afterburner, a little bit cooler here. We're looking at 75 compared to 77 that we were seeing on the other one. So that's going to give us a, a good idea of benchmark performance. That's the three that we like to run recently. So we're finished up with uh, taking a look at those. We're going to take a quick look into the BIOS to see what's available to us. The computer is completely off. I'm going to hit the power button and continually press F2. that'll take you into the BIOS. So on the main page here, it's just going to be more information than anything else. Your BIOS version, EC version, amount of memory that's in there. System date and time is really the only thing that can be changed. Into the advanced tab, we have our easy flash to update the BIOS, internal pointing device for your touchpad, wake on lid open, power off energy saving, Intel virtualization technology, Intel AES and I, ETD, your SATA configuration, so we have this on AHCI right now. Then we're going to go to the graphics configuration, USB configuration, and your network stack. Going off to the boot menu, you can enable or disable the fast boot, launch CSM, option uh, boot 1 is the Windows boot manager. You can add a new boot option or delete a boot option. So let's go check that out. Our security where you can set a password and then save and exit. So we're going to just uh, discard changes and exit. And I'll verify that. And it'll just reboot into Windows. We're going to pop open the bottom panel just to take a look at what's upgradable on it. Uh, this model, there's not a whole lot. There's a little uh, plastic piece right here that you pop off and then you'll find a regular Phillips head there. You undo that and then there's a little tab you can reach under and pop that right off. And you'll see there's your two RAM sticks there. They're already occupied. Uh, hard drive over here that's occupied and an empty one right here too. So you can uh, upgrade one of those if you like. And then for the battery, it is removable. You just hit the, the latch open, and then you can lift it away. So that's the removal of the battery, and pretty much all the internals. Uh, the rest of it would take pretty much a complete teardown to get to, and we're not going to go that in-depth with this model on the review. Well, that is going to finish up our look at the Asus GL771JM-DH71. Hope you got some good information out of it. If you still have any further questions, feel free to contact us. The phone number, 1-877-289-9684. You can email sales at exoticpc.com or reach us on our live chat. Uh, you'll find the link on our website. And we are in the office from 9 to 5.30 Central Time, Monday through Friday. Be sure to subscribe to keep up with our video reviews. And any questions or comments also, feel free to leave them uh, below and we'll be happy to answer them for you. Thanks.